As you're all well aware, the NBA initiated some rule changes over the offseason, cracking down on foul drawing across the league. Gone are the times where guys can stop and flop backwards to draw fouls, and no longer can offensive players launch themselves into defenders to get free throws. Overall, I think everyone agrees that these rule changes are a good thing. It keeps the flow of the game much smoother, eliminating what felt like constant stoppages in years past. But as you know, rule changes come with adjustments to the rules, and those don't always come easily. I'm sure you're seeing people all over the internet saying, oh, now that he can't twerk for free throws, he's going to be a bum. L plus Y be better. And if you're anything like me, it's probably the dumbest thing that you're seeing on your timeline right now. It happens every year with something. There's a poor start for someone and all of a sudden they aren't going to be the same player. Let's not forget the Hawks started last season like four games below 500. Luka Doncic also started the season shooting 20% from three before having the best shooting season of his career. This is what's called an overreaction. And if you use the internet for more than five minutes, I promise you'll see one. Now, what does any of this have to do with the new rule changes? Well, everything. I'm sure you've seen the stat a million times by now, but currently we are on pace to have the lowest free throw attempts per game in league history as of now being about 20 through 49 games played. Super small sample size, but take a look at the 2020-2021 averages in comparison. It's only about two more than we have this year. I also want you to take a look at the pace on the far right. The pace for this year is currently 101.1. Meanwhile, in 2020, it was 99.2. So clearly the rule changes have worked somewhat in speeding up the pace of the game. But as you saw with the free throws, the difference is only about two possessions. So I've shown you all these stats, but what exactly am I trying to point out here? My point is that there are many players in history that have forced the league to make rule changes. Wilt Chamberlain was so dominant that they had to ban inbound passes from behind the backboard because they would pass it over the backboard and Wilt would be the only one who could reach it. They also had to create goaltending rules because of him. Bruce Bowen forced the NBA to ban defenders from invading takeoff spots of shooters. Charles Barkley contributed to the five second paint violation. Great players become so good at something, the league has to change it. It happened throughout history and it's going to continue to happen in the future. The point of all that is to say that great players will always be great no matter what rule changes the league introduces to slow them down. The poster boys of foul baiting, James Harden and Trey Young, will continue to be great players regardless of this rule change. These guys are elite finishers, shooters, passers, and playmakers. This will not eliminate them drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line at an elite rate. They'll just have to do it in other ways. Now one thing that has been made of note is that while the BS fouls have been all but eliminated, there's also been a lot of fouls that have gone uncalled. In fact, after a lackluster performance against the Hornets, shooting 6 for 16 from the field and only a single free throw, Harden came out with this statement in the post-game press conference. A foul is a foul. I feel like we're putting too much emphasis on certain people to where you're looking at it and it's clear fouls. I ask every official if you see a foul, call a foul paraphrasing at least. He went on later to say that he feels targeted by the officials and given he's only had 14 total free throw attempts this year, he may be right. He was the poster boy for this rule change after all. But as I've said, great players will always be great. Harden has struggled in every aspect of his game so far this season and given the fact that he was going through an injury this offseason and much of last season, I think it's to be expected. It's just unfortunate timing for him. I mean, look at Trey Young. Despite some of his questionable efficiency through three games this year, he's definitely been relatively unaffected by these rule changes. He shot 16 total free throws, which is around five per game, but he's still averaging 10 assists and 25 points per game so far in the season. As the season goes on, people play themselves into shape. Look at Luka every single year. Look at Jokic, look at Embiid. There's no question that we'll see these rule changes 
haven't changed as much as we think when it comes to personal performance. Trey Young is still small and will still get pushed around in the paint, and that helps him sell fouls. Joel Embiid is in the paint all the time. He's going to draw fouls. There's different ways for each player to draw fouls, and if they're really good at it, these rule changes are not going to change that at all. So TLDR, stop overreacting. The superstars will be the superstars, and they will survive without getting cheap foul calls. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Let me know what you guys think about this rule change in the comments, and y'all have a good one.